Before I begin, let me start by saying I wrote this video for my mama. It's one of her favorite movies, and she likes Mean Jeb. So if anything in this video offends you, blame mama. The stars of our movie today are Mrs. Farker and Omar Sha Perfect Teeth. Play! Our based on a true story story begins with a woman named Fanny showing up at the New Amsterdam Theater where she's the headliner of an old Broadway act called the Ziegfeld Follies back in the day when shows on Broadway weren't whack. Oh hell, you can already tell that something ain't right and this movie is probably going to end badly. Okay, time for a two hour two act flashback. So our story really begins with Fanny's mama's friends and Fanny's mama singing about how Fanny can sing her fanny off, but ain't too easy on the eyes and got boobies the size of lentils. Which is exactly how my mama describes me. So our story really, really begins with Fanny rehearsing in her show. And she stinks. And the producer's like, you ugly. And you stink. So she starts singing. But ain't nobody listening to sh and they kick her out right on her fanny. And then she keeps singing. And she ripped that song a new fanny hole. But the theater partner is like, damn, maybe we should cast talent over titties. So he gives her partner another show when the other theater producer guy ain't going to be there. And she still stinks. But she stinks so bad, people actually love it. Like, Taylor Swift songs. Oh lord, that's one of them jokes made me glad this channel's still small. Well, I guess if you act like a fool long enough, some people are bound to find it charming. Which is essentially the story of my life. So she gets a solo. Something about how she'd rather be sad without this one man than be happy with some other man. Because this is gonna end badly. Like I done told you. And if you guessed that this song was also ripped a new fanny hole, you would be correct. And the audience thinks she's the bee's tits. Just like the bee's knees, but better. And she's in her dressing room with the other girls when they hear, Knock, knock. Who's there? Just what this movie ordered. Some dapper sexy bitch. And some dapper sexy bitch says, Actually, my name is Nick Arnstein. And I thought your singing was lovely. And Fanny's like, What'd you say? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you of all the sexy. So to get Fanny a pay raise, he bluffs. Which is professional gambler speak for, Lies through his perfect teeth. Six months later, she gets a message from Mrs. Ziegfeld requesting her Fanny show up for an audition. And she doesn't stink. But she gets a little self-conscious when the first song she's supposed to sing has lyrics talking about how beautiful she is. This movie tickles me trying to act like Barbara Streisand's ugly. When she was 50, she was in 22-year-old Andre Agassi's box. And if I'm keeping it real, he was probably also in hers. When this movie came out, Andre Agassi was like negative two. So f*** your movie. F*** you very much. But because she wants people to laugh with her instead of at her, she makes the song a joke about how men show their love in ways that make women miserable. And Mr. Ziegfeld is not amused, but the audience is, so he's like, I hate it, but the fans love it, so keep doing it. Which is exactly what the music studio says to Taylor Swift. Oh lord, I'ma get myself in so much trouble. And then they hear, knock knock, and it's another dapper sexy b just playing, is Nick again. So he goes with her to meet her mama and all her mama's friends. And they sneak outside and Barbara sings People. And as with all the other songs Fanny holds, this one too is ripped anew. I'll try to sing it for you like Barbara. People, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. Jesus Christ, I sound like a shitty Tom Jones. I apologize for that. I'll tell you what. Find someone you don't like and play that for him. So Nick tells Fanny he's gotta leave tomorrow and then he'll call her. And then they get a smooch on. And he leaves. And she don't see the sexy bit for a whole year and two weeks. And he comes back with this nag. And he starts his mag dad in. Then they start boning. But pimping ain't easy or cheap. So he needs to get on a boat with some rich bitches and do some gambling. But Fanny is a little clingy. So she hops on Theodore Tugboat and chases him down all while singing that song that Leah Michelle thinks she can sing. But she stinks. Why do I do this to myself? My comment's gonna be full of BTS Army Swifties and Glee fans. Intermission. For those of you who don't know, this was an ancient tradition in cinema. When the movies were so good, you didn't want them to end, so they'd have to give you a break to go piss. Which leads me to my usual conclusion. No. No. Sucks. Our based on a true story story continues with Fanny on the ship with Nick. And I ain't no expert or nothing, but I don't really know how that tiny tugboat caught up with that big ass ocean liner. And frankly, I think Fanny could have moved faster if she'd have hopped a ride on a seagull. But all that matters is whether Nick can make some banks so they can get hitched. And it does. So they do. Then Nick buys them this mucho grande crib and Fanny squeezes out this tiny little bit. Unfortunately, tiny little bits and mucho grande cribs require mucho dinero. So Nick tries to strike oil in Oklahoma, but he don't. 
So because the kid and the house are both expensive as hell, but somehow only one of those things is worth any money, they sell the fancy digs. And now Nick is bummed and feeling like less of a man because he a broke fanny. But guess who ain't a broke fanny? Fanny. So she tries her damnedest to hook him up with a job job by putting up some of that non-broke fanny mucho dinero, but he's like, look, maybe someday in the future men will sit on their broke jobless fannies and spend their wise money buying feet pics on OnlyFans, but we about a hundred years too early for that shit. So Nick takes a job selling fake bonds, gets thrown in the pokey, pleads guilty, tells Fanny she should drop him faster than Adidas dropped Kanye, but she won't. Now we're back at the based on a true story beginning of the based on a true story story, which is really the based on a true story end, where we can tell something ain't right and that it's gonna end badly. And Nick is like, well, I thought it over and we can't be together because I ain't got shit to my name except my dumb ass pride. So get your Fanny out yonder and sing the last song in this movie about how you'll always love me no matter what and make everyone watching this crying that they left over goobers because that's all that's ever left at the bottom of a tub of popcorn. So she goes out there and sings the last song in this movie about how she'll always love him no matter what. It makes everyone watching this crying that they left over goobers because that's all that's ever left at the bottom of a box of popcorn. The end! No really, that's the end. What, was you expecting a happy ending? Ah, ah, this is a Streisand movie, so psych, bitch! Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for your regular fix of meth. You can expect me to upload videos every time I feel like it. Oh, and see this list of muffins? They keep me from having to sell my feet pics to broke fanny jobless men on OnlyFans. If you would like me to continue keeping my feet private, how's about you head over to my Patreon and give me a little holiday buck or two? It don't even gotta be mucho grande dinero. Or you could do like these member muffins down here and drop me a little change here on YouTube. For more is explained for, I'm Jeb. Oh, dial. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts, she's cheer captain and I'm on the bleachers. Dreaming about the day when you wake up and find that what you're looking for has been here the whole time. I hate how many words I know to Taylor Swift songs. You think she'll ever go back to country music?